Well, not really. We're poor because you have to stay here and listen to me. He gets to take a break every now and then. If you turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm going to read verses 8 through 10 and have a word of prayer. <clears throat> we got this down right, don't we, that we are just pilgrims traveling through this world. Joyce mentioned uh, having to sell her home but we're not home yet. And I'll almost guarantee, Joyce, that your home will have a zip line. And Ned and I will come over. <laughs> Hebrews 11, verses 8 through 10. <clears throat> By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, I do pray that you would bless by speaking to our hearts through the comforter through the Holy Spirit through our hope that promise that you've given us and I pray that you'd help me bring this message through the Holy Spirit for I ask it in Jesus name amen, amen. this is a great chapter on faith isn't it and here he's talking about the faith of Abraham and that God promised him something and Abraham stepped out on that promise and you and I I trust that everyone here has understood the promise of salvation from through Jesus Christ our Savior and his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. And you've trusted in that promise. When God told Abraham to step out by faith, I, I want to read the verses, uh, and Jason read some uh, already in his little devotion before we did our scripture reading about what God said to Abraham <clears throat> and the question I have is how much did Abraham know and then the other question is how much more do we know now right and so I'm going to read you don't have to turn there but I'm going to read out of Genesis 12 verses 1 through 3 about God's promise to Abraham the Lord had said unto him, Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee, listen to this, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed and so again the question is how much did Abraham really comprehend what God was saying it was enough you know you know it's always enough when God says something to you right <laughs> and back then God spoke to them now he speaks to us through his holy word but it was enough for him to step out he knew God promised him a nation of his own. A nation that would have in it somewhere by faith that elusive city whose builder and foundations were made by God. And that through him all families of the earth would be blessed. There's a lot too 
what seemingly seems a small promise in a sense that it was just a few words. But you know, sometimes only God has to speak a few words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Few words, but what a promise. What a promise. So what do we know now? Now we can read in Revelation chapter 7 about blessing all the families of the earth. We can read in Revelation 7, 9, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. That all nations of the earth that God promised Abraham would be blessed would be blessed with a place called heaven that has a city whose builder is God. And there they are. Now we know a little bit more, don't we? And guess what? That's in the future. We believe that too. That promise. If God promised Abraham and Abraham set out and through Abraham came the Messiah and now you and I have accepted him as our savior, we can believe that someday we'll, we'll, we will be in that city. It's almost like when it says Abraham looked for a city whose foundations were, God was the builder, that it was more like he was looking forward to. We also read in Revelation, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. There's that city. We get, we get a better glimpse of it than Abraham did, don't we? We get to read Revelation 21. And the foundation of the wall of the city was garnished with all matter of precious stones, the foundations. We get to look in the future maybe a little bit better than Abraham did, but the, this, the wonderful, the astonishing thing is we can look back on the promise that God made to Abraham thousands of years ago, and we can follow God's promise with Abraham all through the scriptures to where Abraham did find a great nation, became a great nation. And, and then we can see that through him all families of the earth are blessed because that through him and his seed came the Messiah. We can look back on all of those promises and see that God kept every promise and he still to this day does and he will. What's the gist of this sermon? Is to increase our faith, right? Sometimes we come to church on a Sunday and our batteries are pretty well worn down. And we need to recharge them. Now let me, let me talk about, in a sense, women when I read verse 11 of a Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11, 11 says this about Sarah. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Can we say that Abraham believed God's promise and Sarah gave birth to it? Can we follow Sarah and her line all the way down to Mary? And Mary believed God? Can I read to you Genesis 3.15, which God said to Satan, I will put an enemy, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. God gave Abraham the promise. 
Sarah gave birth to the promise all the way down through Mary. I don't know, sometimes uh, preachers say they preach a lot and we preach a lot about him and them and uh, he did this and he did that. But you know, Sarah's faith, I, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how to put it other than how much I admire the faith. The faith of a mother, the faith of a woman. Sometimes uh, I remember my mother's faith more than I remember my dad's. I remember the influence my mom had on me more than I do my dad, even, even though my dad taught me to hunt and fish and do all the things that men do. And, but I will never forget my mother's love. I wanted to touch on Sarah and, and, and Mary and admire them for their faith. Hebrews 11, verses 12 through 14 says, <clears throat> Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Don't we still to this day? Can I begin to say that you're not home yet? We're still headed there. While we're here in church on Sunday, may we reset our focus and our eyes on that country. Because you and I, my friends, still seek that country and that city, don't we? And we can get all caught up and blinded by what's going on in our life down here. My daughter called me last night and she said, Dad, Trump just got shot in the head. And I, everything went black for me. I mean, I just, you know, I'm uh, not going to preach politics. But I thought, what a sad day. What a sad day in our country. And then I come here in church and I remind myself, I'm not home yet. And it doesn't... It is of concern, but I've got something to look forward to. From God's promise to Adam and Eve in Genesis 3.15, where I read, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. From that promise, we can follow it to Abraham and it was basically the same promise. And in thy seed, all families of the earth will be blessed. And we can follow that promise through the Bible, and we can follow it all the way to the promise that Jesus said in John chapter 14, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you, that city. And then we can follow that all the way to Revelations and begin to see what that city looks like. Just get a glimpse. I don't think we could handle what's really in heaven. I don't think our, our hearts could handle it. But we get to the point when we begin to think about this, we can say the same thing that Paul said in Romans chapter 8, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, 
nor angels or principalities or powers, or things present or things to come, height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You might take away my home down here. Uh, you might, I may have to sell my home someday, but I'm really not home yet. What did Jesus say? Foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He never had an address while he was here because he wasn't home yet. He came down to take us home. You're not home yet. We're just traveling through. So the last two verses I'm going to read is verses 15 and 16 of Hebrews 11. <clears throat> and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. And your name is in there. Your name is written down. He prepared a city for you. There's much more, isn't there? I have not seen here, have not heard what God has prepared. About the best he, we can do and he can give us is just a glimpse of the city. Abraham knew about it. <clears throat> he knew it by, about it by faith and our faith after we look back at Abraham. We have a better idea yet. The beginning of Hebrews 11 says uh, faith is the substance. And there is substance to our faith in that city. In these last two verses that I read, it, and truly if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. I don't ever want to go back. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I know where I'm headed. And I'm looking so much forward to that city. That I don't ever want to go back. Sometimes we may reflect on better times in our lives. When we were kids. Some of you like to travel up north. and uh, When we were kids, we traveled up north every summer with mom and dad in a pop-up camper. And with three boys who lived during the age of cowboys and Indians and army. And uh, I had a, almost a complete Roy Rogers outfit. I mean, rubber-tipped bows and arrows. I mean, life was good for three little boys and we packed everything in that camper and mom and dad were more than tickled to just turn us loose wherever the campsite was and to scream and holler and cry and do whatever boys do and get all dirty and then sleep good <laughs> sleep good through the night give them a little peace <laughs> Those were better days. But there's no better day than me seeing my brothers in heaven again. Yeah, when we get up there, we might reminisce how me as the bigger brother, how I would take the rubber tip off my bow and arrow, get them on a going away shot, Or my brother, my brothers and my other brother took my, our youngest brother and took him up into my sister's closet, outside the closet, because we knew hanging up in the closet, she had just made a paper mache doll that she had hanging on the closet. 
and it, the skin was all wrinkly on paper mache. <laughs> it looked like a witch. <laughs> he didn't know about it. And we took and we opened that closet door and his eyes just got big as moons and we shoved him in there and shut the, <laughs> shut the closet and listened to him scream long enough till we got done laughing and then we opened the door and out he comes crying. We, we hug him and then, you know how you can do when you hurt a little kid? You can make him laugh within three minutes. We had him laughing again so mom wouldn't spank us. <laughs> Fond memories, but you know what? I don't want to go back. I'd like to remember. But I don't want to go back. And the, and the, and the greatest thing I'm talking about is I don't ever want to go back into the life of sin. I don't want to go back. The Bible says that God is not ashamed of me. So it would behoove me not to do something that would make him ashamed, right? So is it also good for us to remember as we're headed for that city to live a good life, to be a Christian, to never want to go back, to realize that we're not home yet, and we have a bright and beautiful future waiting for us. We'll have an address there that will be permanent. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. May God encourage your hearts to look forward, to remember you're not home yet, and to live for him. And may God bless the preaching of his holy word.